So we already saw how to put together this Dramble cluster in the ASMR fashion, uh, but here is a video clip that I recorded earlier this year when I was comparing putting this cluster together uh, to putting together the Turing Pi cluster and just showing how there's a lot more steps involved when you have to wire every single little thing together. You have to put all the cases together. You have to, as you see in here, put all these little nuts on all the little levels of it to put everything together. It's a lot more complicated to set, set up this cluster physically uh, than it is to set up the Turing Pi cluster, which is one reason I like that Turing Pi for experimentation. Um, but it is easier than putting together a bunch of laptops or a bunch of old computers. You can see everything fits in my hands here. It's it's a nice little compact setup, um, and and I, I like to, to work with it. So anyway, what I did for my cluster was I put Raspberry Pi OS Beta 64-bit version you could also use Ubuntu 64-bit uh, for Pi, um, but, but I enjoy using the 64-bit version mostly because a lot more Docker containers nowadays are compatible with ARM64, and there's very few that are building for ARM 32-bit. Uh, so you can you can get things to work on 32-bit, but the 64-bit Pi OS is going to run a lot nicer. The first thing that you need to do once you get everything set up is to find the IP addresses of your cluster nodes. And I, you can either use Nmap or I'm using uh, an app called Fing here, uh, F-I-N-G. And uh, it basically, you have to find the IP address and the MAC address. And then I have a playbook that I run after I copy all my SSH keys to these four nodes. I have an Ansible playbook that automates the process of setting up the network. If you want to do it manually, you can. But basically, you have to set uh, either custom IPs or just configure all the IPs of your, your Raspberry Pis or whatever other computers. And you also have to let them communicate with each other. So I set up a DHCP name like cube1, cube2, cube3, cube4, uh, and set that up inside each node. And then I rebooted them to make sure that they could run correctly. After that, I use this playbook. This is an Ansible playbook. It's uh, just a bunch of automation that runs and um, installs uh, Kubernetes. Um, it, uh, it sets up NFS on the master server. It builds in um, all the security settings for the servers themselves that's important to have. Um, it does all that stuff. And then at the end of that Ansible playbook, which automates everything, and as I've said many times before, this Kubernetes 101 series, in every description for um, these videos, there's a link to get Ansible for Kubernetes for $5. Um, take advantage of that offer because all the things that I do in this playbook are described in that Ansible for Kubernetes book which I'm still working on and I'll have it finished. But the cool thing is if you buy that book, you'll get every update that I make to it forever for free through LeanPub, which is great. Um, but it uses Ansible to automate all this because when you're working with bare metal servers, it's hard to manage everything by hand when you're dealing with four servers or even two or three servers, uh, all the setup that you have to do for bare metal, um, whether it's the security of the servers themselves, configuring auto updates, um, doing even things like booting them or rebooting them, uh, managing the software that's on the nodes, because Kubernetes has a stack that it needs to have running in the background, and you need to manage that. So I use Ansible for that. You can use other tools too. Uh, but anyway, uh, once that's done, though, you need to go in and uh, on, on your computer, or if you have your own DHCP server running locally, uh, you can set this up. But I, I set up on my computer uh, an alias in my hosts file to cluster.pydramble.test. And you can point this at any of the four nodes with my Dramble configuration. There are other ways to do this. You could, you could have a separate Raspberry Pi running Metal LB uh, or running Nginx or something and have it as the front for your entire cluster. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in depth in this video. That's a little bit more of an advanced topic, I think. Um, but that is an option that you can use instead of pointing your ingress <laughs> all at, at one of the four servers, because if that server goes down, then your ingress goes down. After that's all done, uh, I could access the cluster at cluster.pydremel.test. This is the Drupal site that we saw a few episodes ago, how to set it up. And all the configuration is already in the cluster, all the secrets, all the MySQL config, all that stuff. So it installs Drupal. And then I'm, I set up the site just as I did before, uh, putting in all the relevant details and installing everything that I needed for Drupal. And uh, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Um, and I use the password admin. But luckily, in this case, you cannot access this cluster because this cluster is on my private network. If you have access to my private network, first of all, please get off of it. And second of all, um, that would be a very big security breach. Uh, but one big difference you see here with uh, 
with the cluster running in the Dramble, these Raspberry Pis, is uh, that the first few page loads, there's a lot of resources that aren't loading in right, like CSS files and maybe some JavaScript. And that's because the NFS on the Raspberry Pis is actually a lot slower than the NFS that we were using when we were on Linode. So it's something to keep in mind uh, talking about those limitations that we had with uh, slower Raspberry Pis, you see some of the, the things that are slower when you have slower storage with micro SD cards on the Raspberry Pi, and it can show you flaws in your application where something can load in and it's not actually fully loaded because something on the back end still hasn't written that file out to the network and read it in on all the other nodes or something like that. So it's an area where it can be annoying sometimes because things are slower, but it can also help you find ways to make your applications run better with those limitations in place. Anyways, I'm going to pass it back to myself yet again. So here you go, Jeff.